In the last video, I showed you how to declare a manifold and to define charts on it. In this video, we want to work with vector fields. Vector fields take the values in tangent spaces, so let's define a tangent space. Remember that we have defined manifold M and also a point P on M. So in order to define the tangent space of M at the point P, we have to invoke the tangent underscore space function. So let's do that. And uh, now TPM is just uh, um, displayed by its LaTeX expression. What's the dimension of this tangent space? Well, it's three because uh, we have declared M to be a three-dimensional manifold. Now, each chart that contains the point at which we have taken the tangent space induces a basis of this tangent space. And so which basis do we have? Well, we have two charts namely the chart the chart std and the chart polar actually the chart std comes in two flavors namely ones are defined on all of the manifold and ones defined on u but uh, this would induce the same basis and therefore we have only two bases one coming from the xyz coordinates and one coming from the r phi t coordinates yeah, so it's not very it would not be very meaningful to list this um, this frame twice uh, because it uh, doesn't matter whether it comes from the chart defined on all of M or on the, on the chart restricted to U. Okay, and now we can define tangent vectors by applying TP to a tuple which expresses the vector in the default chart, which would be the first one, which would be is the one that's coming from the default, uh, yeah, default chart. Okay, so let's express it. So we have our vector is now minus two times the first tangent, uh, the first basis vector in the default basis, plus one times the second vector in the default basis, plus zero times the third vector in the default basis. So, which is this expression? And uh, if we are now interested in how the same vector is expressed in the other basis, what we can do is we display the vector with respect to the second basis and in order to access the second basis we take this tp.basis which is the list of both bases and we take the second entry which is given by the index 1 because due to the usual python numbering uh, numbering in lists starts with 0 right so that if i had 0 here then uh, i would express the vector in this basis where we have defined it actually. And if I take one, then I express the vector in the second basis, which gives me uh, the expression in R, phi and T coordinates. Okay. Now these are individual vectors, uh, tangent vectors at specific points of the manifold. Um, vector fields are defined on parts of the manifold or on the whole manifold. And again, each basis induces induces frame fields and so we have one coming from the basis std which is the uh, the basis coming from the vector from the coefficient from the coordinate functions defined on all of m because that's where the standard the basis std is defined so explicitly the domain of this is all of m and the second chart the polar chart uh, gives me the uh, frame field ddr ddt phi ddt but this time only defined on U. And if I want to access the domain explicitly, uh, I can do this with the method domain. All right. And if I want to have know all the frames th that I have, then I can call the frames method. And this time, the um, both the chart std and the chart std restricted to U appear because as frame fields, these are two different things. One is defined on M and the other is defined on U like the polar chart. On U, of course, we have only two frames, namely this one and that one. So this gives me now this list. There's a default frame, which of course by default is the one coming from the default chart. In our case, ddx, ddy, ddz. You can change that with the set default frame method if you want. So in our case, it's just uh, coming from the default chart. So it's ddx, ddy, ddz defined on all of M. Let's give this default frame a name, and then we can access the individual frame fields uh, according to their numbering. And now you see 
uh, I insert two here, which really gives me the second field in this frame because I used the start index equal one convention when I defined the manifold. So unlike the usual Python uh, um, numbering, uh, which would give me this as zero, this as one, and this as two, since I used the index equal one convention, this is one, this is two, and this is three. So you see E of two gives me DDY, which is really the second uh, field in the frame. Now we can define vector fields as linear combination of frame fields if you want. So we can set V equal to the second frame field plus two X times third frame field. And if I display it, I get what we expect, the second frame field plus two X times the third frame field. So that's a way to define a vector field. And uh, another way to do that uh, would be to explicitly put the coefficient functions or yeah, set the coefficient functions. So if I do this in this example, then I'm saying, okay, I'm expressing this vector field V again in the default frame. The first coefficient function is Y, so which is what we have here. The second one is minus X, which is what we have here. And the third one is X, Y, Z, which is what we have here. Now we might wonder how does this, is this same vector field look in the in polar coordinates. Uh, so let's just call it in polar coordinates and uh, say immediately as it tells us uh, the corresponding expression. That's nice and useful in many cases. Now remember we have also scalar fields on our manifold and um, uh, we had defined one which we called F. Here it is again to remind you. And uh, vector fields can be applied to, to scalar fields. That means the scalar field is differentiated in the direction of the vector field and the result is then another scalar field. So let's look at what we get. If we apply the vector field to the scalar field F, then we get another uh, scalar field, which we call S. And uh, then Sage computes for us the result in both uh, charts already. Okay. If we define a vector field and we do this by uh, setting the coefficient functions, then it's understood that unset coefficient functions are to be R0. So here in this case, I define a new vector field W and I only set the second coefficient function equal to three. And if I display the result, uh, we see that I get three times, times the second frame field. And so it's understood that the coefficients of DDX and DDZ are zero in this case. Now here's a nice intense instance where you loop over the, over the co coordinate indices. So for all uh, for each uh, i in the i range, which in our case is 1, 2, 3, I want to express the frame field E of i. Remember, E was set to be the default frame. So that's the frame ddx, ddy, ddz. So that's the default frame. And so I express each of the default frames in polar coordinates. So let's do that. And so we see we get these uh, three expressions, ddx expressed in polar coordinates, dy expressed in polar coordinates and corresponding for z. All right, so that's also nice. So this conversion is done uh, very quickly by Sage. If you want to have all components of a vector field at once, again, you can use the um, colon operator. Or for a nice display, you can also use the method display underscore comp. Then you get a list of the coefficient functions nicely display, displayed using LaTeX. All right, it's also possible, like for scalar fields, uh, to use unspecified functions in your definition. So if we define a vector field U on our manifold, and then we can uh, use unspecified functions A and B in this case of our standard coordinates. Um, and to define the coefficient functions and then uh, we get uh, such an expression for our vector field where a little a and little b are unspecified functions. We can do arithmetic with vector fields so we can add them uh, etc multiply them with functions so if I add my three vector fields that I've defined so far uh, then I can let's say display it in the standard ch chart on u then I get uh, such uh, an expression. And you see in this, dis, uh, in this displayed formula, the left-hand side is just, um, is just uh, 
uh, this plate as u plus v plus w because we have a Python variable representing this new vector field, but we have no mathematical name for it so far. If we want to have that, we can set this name by, let's say, the set uh, you applying the set underscore name method to it, and let's call it s, let's say, by the string s. And if we do that, then uh, we will see, we will have this new name used in the displayed formula. Yeah, there we can also apply Lie brackets or form Lie brackets of two vector fields, which will then gives us another uh, vector field. So if we do this with the vector fields u and v, then uh, and display the Lie bracket, the result, then uh, we get uh, such an expression. So you see this now also involves uh, derivatives of the unspecified functions little a and little b. Okay, now there is. Uh, the possibility to also visualize vector fields by plotting them, and um, if we do, so, if we do that, it, it's uh, we have to specify for, with, for which coordinates we do this without um, an explicit uh, argument. This is done in the default uh, coordinates, but still we also have to tell Sage in which range of the coordinates uh, the plot should be given. Uh, we cannot plot the thing from minus infinity to plus infinity. So in this case, I chose a plot that is defined on the region of the manifold given by x to be lie between minus 1 and 1, y to be lie between minus 1 and 1, and z to lie between 1 and 2. And here I also uh, tell Sage uh, how many vectors are to be plotted. So I give a step size um, uh, to, uh, to Sage, and uh, well, these two are arguments together, the range arguments and the steps argument together, then um, determine how many vectors are, are uh, plotted all together. And so here we have the vector field. We can also zoom into it if you like. Uh, you should note that this box that is displayed here is larger than the region that I have specified because the vectors extend and so what we see this box uh, is uh, so the region where we have defined the vector field is a smaller sub box inside but to each point according to this step notation we have attached a vector and this vector extends and so the result the resulting plot is uh, contained in a larger box uh, than than um, than the the domain of definition uh, that i've chosen here okay if you think, oh, well, I can't really see much, uh, these uh, vectors uh, somehow uh, hide uh, each other, then it's also possible to change or to rescale the length of the displayed vectors. So we could do that here by adding another argument scale equal to, let's say, one half. And let's do the plot again. And then uh, we will plot again the same uh, on the same domain of the de definition our vector fields uh, with the same uh, step size here, but um, the vectors will be shorter by a factor of one half. Uh, so maybe you like this better, so maybe you can see the vector field better now. All right, that's a quite nice uh, way to visualize vector fields. Now, like for a scalar field, we can evaluate a vector field at a given point. So let's take the vector field V and evaluate it at our point P. Then what we get is, so then what we get is this tangent vector. And of course, that's now an element of the corresponding tangent space at P. So let's see, VP is in TP. Yes, that's true. Uh, so the vector field evaluated P is an element of the tangent space at P. We can also, um, um, evaluate the Lie bracket of two vector fields at a certain point if you want. So let's take the vector field V and W, compute its Lie bracket and evaluate the result at P. Let's see what we get. Well, then we get a certain vector at the point P, which in the standard basis is expressed in this way. Now we know how to work with vector fields. Next time we will treat differential forms and tensor fields. Hope to see you again.